Welcome everyone to Church Online. As you all know, this is Good Friday, Good Friday evening. And this Good Friday is a whole lot different than any Friday that Good Friday that we've ever experienced before. And of course, it's because of the coronavirus. Listen, though, I do want to welcome you, and I'm so happy that we can gather together like we are tonight. It may not be in, in an assembly in our sanctuary, but at least we can come together as we are tonight uh, by way of technology. So I wanted to say welcome to you, welcome to you, welcome to you. There's a scripture verse that goes over and over in my mind. It has all week long during this Passion Week, and it's a passage of scripture that's so familiar to everyone found in John chapter 3 verse number 16 and it says this here for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but would have everlasting life oh what a passage of scripture that is and then in <clears throat> excuse me and then in John chapter 19 verse number 30 it, were, it was Jesus' last words when he said, it is finished. And after he said that, the scripture says he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Well, we're going to have a, uh, a, a blessed time tonight as we partake of communion together. Uh, Terry is going to be joining me in just a, a moment as we partake of the elements together. So if you would like right now, you may be around your table or in your living room, but I just want to encourage you to get your juice together, your bread or your crackers, whatever you'll be using, and we'll just enjoy a time. We're not together, but yet we are together, and we'll just have a blessed time in the Lord together as we partake of these elements in remembrance of what He has done for us. Let's uh, just open our time with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful this evening for your grace and for your mercy. Your mercies are new every morning, the scripture says. Great is your faithfulness to us. And uh, Heavenly Father, as we look back and we remember what you have done for us, may we express from the depths of our hearts praise and worship to you because you are the life giver. You've forgiven us of our sins and you've made it possible for, have the, for us to have the free gift of eternal life. And so we say thank you, Lord. Bless our time together this evening, and we'll be so grateful for it. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray, in his matchless name, amen and amen. Happy Good Friday, church family. It's so good to come into your homes through live streaming. I can't tell you how much Sharon and I miss you guys. A friendly handshake, a hug. We're looking for, forward to the day that we can come back together in God's house and give you that handshake and give you that hug. I have a few announcements today. Um, the first announcement is regarding the Right Now Media app. I just want to tell you that I love it and I enjoy it so much. And I'm so glad that the church has given, been able to give this to us as a free gift. Um, right now, if you have anxiety over this COVID-19, there's a Bible study, and it's called Overcoming Anxiety During COVID-19, which is free. It's absolutely free for you. Nobody has to know you're even looking at it. Um, you just go onto that app, click on it, and you'll be able to see the sessions. I've also loved it because I've been able to do a family devotional with Skyler this week on Easter week, and last night we did the Passover, which is really, really cool because we got to talk about what happened as a result of the Passover, and she had some questions, which was really nice. I'm also doing my own Bible study, um, which is the Easter experience by Kyle Eidelman. And it's really cool to sit at home on your couch and, and learn of the whole Easter experience, which is really, really nice. This is free for the whole church. So if you're a regular attendee and you don't have it, go ahead and go to arlitafirst.org and click on the Right Now Media um, logo and it says register here. And if you do have it, I just want to say, take advantage of it. Take, take your family through a family devotional. Do a, a Bible study with you and your wife or just you by yourself like I have been. It's really, really awesome. It's great for the whole family. There's so much content on there. And also, I'm super excited about our Easter morning celebration. I'm excited about celebrating Jesus Christ's resurrection this Sunday. We might be celebrating Easter differently than we usually do, but I can say this, that Jesus Christ hasn't changed. 
He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? So I want to challenge you today to invite your friends and family to the live stream this Sunday. I'll say this. Right now, I know people who are looking for an answer right now for this COVID-19 crisis. People who have asked me to pray for them. All I can offer them is Jesus Christ. We do have the answer for them, and that is Jesus Christ. So this Sunday, you can invite them. Jesus Christ raised from the dead for us. And as a result of that, we are celebrating that this Sunday. So invite them. Invite friends and family. They can go on to ourleaderfirst.org. Our English and Spanish services will be 10.30 a.m. this Sunday morning. And they can, all you have to do is click on streaming live Sunday morning service. And for the Spanish, the streaming live for Spanish service. I'm so excited about this because we get to um, spread the gospel this way. Also, I'm super excited about the children's program that we'll, we'll be having on Sunday morning right after our English service. I'm excited about that. I'm going to have my whole family at our couch with us so we can celebrate. Finally, we want to thank you so much for your faithfulness to God's house. I know in this time, we don't know what's going to happen. But I can tell you this, that we've been, Sharon and I have been so faithful to God's house with our tithes and offerings. We actually had an unexpected check come in this week. We had also a sister call us saying, hey, come pick up some baby wipes. No cost. So God has been taking care of us. So I just want to challenge you, if you haven't give, give tonight. And right now we're going to be giving to the Lord in the special night of a Good Friday. Um, there's a couple ways you can give. As soon as we're done with our service, you can go onto the, um, our website, click on the giving tab right on the right-hand corner. It's very self-explanatory. I've loved it. Just been able to go on there and put in my information. Or you can send a check to the church office. Our address is on the website. If you haven't gotten an envelope, a self-addressed envelope stamped, give us a call. We'll send one right out to you. But tonight, I just want to challenge you. Give to God and watch, God what, what, watch what God can do. And the world's economy is not the same as God's economy. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for what you have done for us, Lord God. We, we give you our gifts tonight, Father, our tithes and offerings, Father. We thank you for what you're going to do for us, Lord God. And I just pray tonight that you would bless tonight's offering. Bless those, Father God, who are giving. Bless those who can't give, Father God. And we give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, good evening, everyone. And welcome once again to our Good Friday communion service online. And I just want to say thank you, Pastor Tony, for those good announcements. And if I can, I just want to piggyback on something that he said. And that is, I just want to invite you to invite your friends and your family members to join us on Sunday morning for a great Easter celebration service. Again, that starts at 1030, as Pastor Tony said, 1030. And then right after our service, you'll be able to enjoy a wonderful, wonderful kids church online. You don't want to miss it. Make sure that your sons and daughters are there. Join them, uh, Pastor Miranda and Sam in the kids uh, club team have just a great, great service planned. So please make every effort to be a part of that. I promise you, you won't be sorry. I want to share just a few thoughts tonight on this Good Friday uh, that we're at. Uh, last Sunday, we began with Palm Sunday, and of course, that's when they lined the streets and were waving the palms and, uh, and yelling out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the King, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And then, of course, you know how the tables turned after that, and we, we, it triggered the Passion Week, Holy Week, and all the week, uh, the days that followed that, uh, Jesus went through some very, very difficult times that led us up to what we look at today, tonight, as Good Friday, and uh, where we celebrate and we reflect upon what Christ has done for us. I wanted to share from a passage of scripture that we'll be looking at during our time together tonight, and it's found in John chapter 19, verses 28 to 30. And this here is the death of Jesus. Jesus, the scene here, is he's hanging on the cross. It's, uh, he's been on the cross, he's been beat, He's got the crown of thorns on his head. Not much time left uh, before he takes his final breath. And this is where the passage of scripture comes in. It says, later, after he'd been on the cross for some time, later, knowing that everything had now been finished, so that the scripture would be fulfilled, 
And then Jesus said these words. He said, I am thirsty. And a jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it. And they put the sponge on a stalk of hyssop plant, and they lifted it up to Jesus' lips. And when he had received the drink, Jesus said this here, and these are three words that I want us to look at tonight. Jesus said these three words. He said, it is finished. And with that, the scripture says, he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. You know, recently I read of a story about a group of missionaries who were in India. And they had arranged a meeting with Mahatma Gandhi. And the reason why they wanted to meet with Gandhi was so that they could discuss the faith and the way to God. And they had quite a good visit, great visit together. And just before these missionaries left, Gandhi asked them to sing one of their favorite Christian hymns that, that best portrayed their faith and belief in Jesus Christ. And so the missionaries responded and said, well, which one would you like us to sing? And he said, once again, he said, well, the, uh, the hymn that best describes the heart of what you Christians believe. So think about that for a minute. Think about that. What hymn would you have chosen? What worship chorus tonight would you say, this is the chorus, this is the hymn that best describes our faith? in Jesus Christ, what hymn would you have chosen? Well, the missionaries chose, I think, one of my favorite hymns. And, uh, and it's entitled, When I Surveyed the Wondrous Cross. And the lyrics go something like this here. It says, When I surveyed the wondrous cross, listen, love so amazing, love so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. And I tell you what, these missionaries had it right when they selected this hymn as the one that best described their, uh, what Christians believe. Think about that. Um, love so amazing. Love so divine. It demands my soul, my life, my all. And again, they were right. The cross, listen, remember this here. The cross is central. It's foundational. It's the heart of our faith in Jesus Christ, in looking to Him and what He has done for us. I thought about this here, to preach Christ, to talk about Christ, to teach about Him, without bringing the cross into the subject matter, would be like me writing a biography on Kobe Bryant, or LeBron James, or Magic Johnson, without mentioning the word basketball. It would be like me writing a biography on President Trump without ever mentioning the U.S. presidency. You see, the heart, the heart of Christianity, the heart of our faith is the cross of Jesus Christ. You take the cross away and you take the resurrection away, you don't have anything. The Apostle Paul said, it's just vain. It, uh, there's no reason for us to meet. There's no reason to, uh, for us to gather for worship and praise. There's no reason for the church to, uh, to be the church because without the cross, we wouldn't be. On this Good Friday communion service, I want to focus on one of the phrases. It's actually the sixth of the seven things that Jesus spoke about, some of his last words that he uttered on the cross. And, uh, and here, in one of the darkest hours, um, we see God's, God's divine plan coming to fruition. And uh, though it was a dark day, it was a bright hour for the purposes for which Jesus Christ came. In John chapter 19, verse 30, we just read this here, but I want to look at it again. Verse number 30, there's those three words. The sixth of the seven phrases that Jesus uttered from the cross. And he said this here, It is finished. It's finished. And, uh, and it's finished has two different meanings. What it meant then and what it means today. And there were some people who said it's finished. And it meant quite a different thing from what Christ said when he said it's finished. 
Think about the soldiers. After their dreaded execution, uh, a savage execution of Jesus on the cross, and after Jesus had taken his last breath, these soldiers stood around, looked at each other, and uttered the words, It's finished. He's gone. The crowd that lined the streets just days earlier um, with, with protests to him um, being the king or being called the king or the Messiah, they were yelling out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Those that were around uh, that day when Jesus was crucified, I'm confident they looked at each other and said, It's finished. It's over. Judas, when he realized the enormity of what he had done in his betrayal, you remember Judas, he, uh, he realized, he recognized what he had done. And when it was all over, he said, It's finished. There's no hope for me. Peter and the disciples, after spending three wonderful years with Jesus, and then all of a sudden there was this denial, and then they deserted him. And the disciples, I'm confident of this here, they looked at one another and said, It's finished. It's finished. Well, what about the priests and the Pharisees? Um, they had conspired to see Jesus done away with. And after Jesus took his last breath on the cross, those Pharisees and the priests, high priests of that time, they probably looked at each other and again as well said, Hey, it's finished. We've accomplished what we were wanting to accomplish. However, all of them said it's finished, but no one could say it the way that Jesus said it or meant what it meant the way Jesus shared it. Now, all of the gospel writers, they write out that Jesus, just before he took his last breath, that he cried out with a loud voice. There's only one of the gospel, the autoptic gospel, it's called, the gospel of John. John records what he actually said. And, uh, and Jesus, he said, it's finished, it's finished. And in those words, when he said it's finished, it was triumph, it was satisfaction. It was a shout really of victory. It's finished, it's accomplished, it's done. And Jesus was in complete control. He had accomplished what he had set out to do. Now, Jesus didn't say this here. He didn't say, I'm finished, but he said, it is finished. Jesus, in, in John chapter 19, verse 20, 28, says this here. Jesus, knowing, knowing that all had now been completed, said this here. He said, it's finished, 100%. It's finished. And then it was just uh, the cross to Christ was, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a surprise to Jesus. It's why he came. And so he basically lived all of his life in the shadow of the cross. And Jesus said this here in, uh, in anticipating the cross and surrendering his life in the way that he did. He said, Father, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work that you gave me to do all. All of his life was lived in the shadow of the cross. When Jesus' birth, when the announcement came, you probably remember this here in Luke chapter 2, verse number 11 says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. There it is. A Savior, which is Christ the Lord. At his baptism, he was introduced as the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And when he was tempted in the, in the wilderness, uh, his temptation was to avoid the cross, uh, to, to set it aside. But he marched toward Jerusalem, the scripture says. And so Jesus, the good shepherd, was knowingly laying down his life for his sheep. His blood was shed, his body was broken, the sacrifice was made as Jesus died, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us back to God. Finished. What a word. Finished. Quite a different meaning from those that stood around the cross while he was crucified. 
They thought it was all finished with. It was, it was done. We've accomplished what we wanted. We got them out of the way. No. Uh, Jesus' definition of his finished was, I finished the work. Well, what does that mean to us now? And we're going to partake of communion in just a minute here. But what does it mean to, it, to us now? Um, it means this here, that not one of us could add anything. We can't add anything to the, it's finished. When it's finished, it is finished. And the Bible says this here, by grace, by the grace of God, are we saved through faith. That not of ourselves, it's a gift of God. So in other words, you can't work for it. You can't earn it. Uh, it's something that he has done for us. And when he said, it's finished, he said, I've, I've accomplished what I've come to do. And that's die for the sins of mankind. It's over. It's finished. And um, we're going to come now and um, partake of the Lord's Supper. And I know I'd asked you earlier, and I sent a, a uh, communication out to you um, to, to purchase some grape juice. If you didn't have any, uh, if you didn't have it on hand, couldn't get to the grocery store, um, anything would do, even, even water in a, in a cup and crackers or bread, so that we can partake of communion together in remembering what Christ has done for us. And I'm going to ask uh, my, my dear wife to come and join me at this time here. And uh, we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper together. And I, I hope that you'll just gather around the table at home, if you're in the living room, the family room, the kitchen, wherever you are, uh, that you'll gather the family together. And let's, uh, let's enjoy remembering what Christ has done for us, remembering that it's finished. Nothing else can be added to what He has done for you. And what he has done for me. Oh, I'm so delighted today for what he has done. I want to read this passage of scripture to you. Um, while you're gathering your the elements together. Gathered around the table. Wherever you might be. But let me read this passage of scripture. It's very familiar to us all. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It says, For I have received of the Lord uh, what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body. This is my body, which is broken for you. Partake of it in remembrance of me. And then he also took the cup and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. He said, Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. He said, because whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim. It's a great testimony. You're, it's a great proclamation um, of the Lord's death until Jesus comes back for us. And I want you to know, friends, he's coming back soon. He's coming back soon. The scriptures talk about some of the things that will be happening in the end times. And uh, we've been seeing a lot of these things the past couple of decades We've been seeing some of the things the scriptures talk about in, uh, in, uh, in it serving as a season in which we need to be looking up because our redemption draweth nigh. He's coming soon. But until he comes, he said, uh, take these elements and partake of them and may it be a proclamation of what I did on the cross for you, for the forgiveness of your sins, the free gift of eternal life, forgiveness for all your sins from the past, purpose for today, and the free gift of eternal life. That's why we do this. And he said this here, he said, So then, whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord unworthily will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. And then he says an interesting thing here. The apostle says, So then, everyone should examine themselves before they eat the bread and drink the cup. Examination. Well, what is it? Well, when you go to the doctor for a physical examination, he's checking you out. He's, he's trying to find out if there's anything that's wrong there. And if the doctor finds out something that's wrong, he'll, uh, he'll let you know about it, and then you'll, you're able to deal with it um, to find healing 
in, in, your, in your body. Well, Jesus says, listen, examine yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit to examine your heart, to examine your life. If there's anything there that shouldn't be there, just say, Lord, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me. In that moment, he does just that. Um, I want you just at home, just to hold the bread up in your hand for a minute. And I want us just to pause for just a, just a, a moment and reflect upon the bread. Think about the broken body of Jesus Christ. Think about the lashes that he endured on that, uh, during that Passion Week when he was beat on, the, on that day. The uh, unjust things that were done to him. But think about the, uh, the lashes that his body absorbed so that we might have what we have today, the forgiveness of sin. And so the bread represents the broken body of Jesus Christ. And I want to pray and just ask God's blessing on the bread just before we partake of it. Um, bow your heads with me if you would. Let's look to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, once again today for your mercies and for your grace. We just love you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. Thank you. Uh, as we look back, you said as we do this, we do it in remembrance of you. And you know, also said, though, that it's a great proclamation of what's taken place in our hearts and our lives. And so today, on this evening, this Good Friday evening, we pause to say thank you, Lord. And I pray you bless this bread as we partake of it together in remembrance of you and what you've done for us. Thank you, Lord. And I just want to pray, Lord, a rich blessing upon all of our dear friends that are joining us tonight. Lord, this church family, our lead of First Assembly of God Church family, oh God, would you just touch each of them tonight, Lord? Touch them. Surround every home with your presence. Surround every person, oh God, we pray, with health and strength, God. In Jesus' name, oh, would you make yourself so real to them, Lord, tonight and the days to come. And we'll be grateful for it. Again, Lord, may your blessing rest upon the bread as we partake of it together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's partake of the bread in remembrance of what Christ has done for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Can you say that with me? Thank you, Lord. Can you just, let's just say it out. I, you know, you're at home. There's nobody there. You've got to be embarrassed of. You, you're just with family. Um, can you say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Can, you. can you say that? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And then the scripture says that uh, in like manner that we partake of this cup that represents the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary for your sin and for my sin. Uh, so thankful for it. And I'm going to ask Terry to, to uh, ask God's blessing upon the cup. And I wanted to ask her to do something else too. Because we have some in our church fellowship that are, that are hurting tonight. They need a physical touch in their body. And uh, one of the things that's in the atonement of Christ were the gifts uh, the Lord gave to his church. The gifts of the Spirit. One of the gifts of the, of the Spirit is the gift of healing. And so I'm going to ask Terry as she asks God's blessing on the cup. It should also remember those that need a touch in their bodies tonight. So join, join us now. Let, let, let's pray. Lord, as we hold this cup in our hands today, we can't help but think of the intense suffering that you endured for us, for the great love that motivated that. And oh Lord, we are so grateful for all that it represents tonight. We thank you for salvation that comes through your blood, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for healing that comes through your blood. Oh, Jesus, we just can't thank you enough for all that it represents. And I pray tonight, Lord, that you would minister that healing touch to those tonight that are in need of healing in their bodies. God, we just pray, and, and as they reach out to you, 
even with their hands, God, just extended toward you, Lord, that you would reach down and touch them as you did. When you walked on this earth, Lord, you touched and healed so many. But God, you gave the ultimate sacrifice, your son Jesus, that we might know you and live with you forever and that we may experience healing and receive healing. And we pray, O oh Lord, that your healing touch would be extended to those that are in need tonight. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that those that need salvation, that may be tuning in right now, God, we pray that, Lord, as they just receive it, that you would just touch them and minister to them, we pray. In the precious, precious name of Jesus, we thank you, Jesus, for what this blood represents. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. You know, just before we partake of the cup, um, I, I asked you on Wednesday night if, if many of you would um, take some time on, on, on this Good Friday, on this day, Friday, to, uh, to fast and pray on this day for our country, for our president, our vice president, for the uh, coronavirus task force. They need God's help. We need God's healing across this land. And uh, I want to thank many of you who spent time in prayer today and you fasted either in the morning or the afternoon or this evening. Maybe you've taken the whole day. Um, but let's just, uh, would you just join just before we partake of the cup in, uh, in praying for, uh, for our land, for the leadership of our land as well. Let's do that. Lord, we thank you that you've given us the gift of prayer, that we can call upon your name. The scripture says it over and over and over again. You speak to us and you say, oh, call on my name and I'll hear you and I'll answer you. And Lord, one of those passages we find in, in, uh, in, in Chronicles, Lord, where you said that if your people would cry out to you and they would repent, that Lord, you would not only forgive their sins not only would you heal their land uh, but lord you would come in and bring an abundant life and so lord we we call on your name tonight and we ask that lord you forgive the sins of our country forgive the sins of our land lord and we we cry out to you we want you lord more than anything we ask you for lord there, for there to be a reformation amongst uh followers of you and not only that, Lord, but a reformation that would take place, not just in the church, but in people, uh, Lord, who have no relationship with you, to continue to do a, a work in their hearts and their lives. Lord, we thank you for the president that you have blessed our land with. We thank you for him, Lord. We pray that you would bless him with health and strength. We thank you for the vice president that you have blessed our land with. Would you bless him with health and strength? Lord, for the coronavirus task force, would you bless them with health, health and strength? And Lord, more than anything they need today is, um, it's not just the knowledge that they have gained in going to college and doing experiments and studies, but Lord, they need wisdom from above. Lord, bring a healing to our land. Lord, spiritually, but also bring a healing to our land, physically. Lord, rebuke this virus, we pray in Jesus' name, and we'll be grateful for it, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, and amen, and amen. Let's partake of the cup together in remembrance of what Christ has done for us. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, just before we close our time in prayer tonight, um, I want you just to, uh, to enjoy these next two worship songs that we're going to be singing. So would you just around your table or in your living room, wherever you're at, let's just pause for a moment. Let's continue to worship the Lord for what he accomplished on this Good Friday 2,000 years ago. Just worship the Lord and praise him. And then we're going to come back and just have a quick closing prayer together. Let's worship him now.
It's always good to worship the Lord. Amen. It's a great thing to do. Well, listen, thank you so much for, for joining together with us all around this uh, Northeast San Fernando Valley, Los Angeles County. Thank you for, uh, for making some time tonight to enjoy a time of communion and fellowship together. And so uh, I look forward again to seeing you on Sunday. Make sure to let a friend know uh, that will be starting at 10.30. And again, uh, probably one of my favorite... No, let me take that back. It's my favorite day of the year. It's Easter Sunday when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for each and every person who has been online tonight for church. Bless them. Bless their homes. Bless all their hands touch. Bless their marriages. Bless their sons and daughters. Lord, may your rich blessing rest upon them. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday online.